As you probably have learned from that silent film introduction, <laughs> this month's innovation challenge is all about... Hello? Hello? Mine's still not. Is yours working? No, nothing. It's all about wireless communications. <laughs> and we couldn't be happier but to announce that we're partnering with Rogers, a Canadian company that's really a giant in wireless communications across our nation. So this is going to be a really neat challenge. There must be a whole history of wireless communications. There is, and, and uh, there's quite a lengthy history. If you go back to the early beginnings, I mean, really just talking, we're communicating right. wirelessly, right? Right. And so before all of this technology came along, um, that was what people used. They used to talk to each other and spread messages down the line using just their voice. Um, and that was kind of, it was effective, but it was challenging. It was limiting because your voice only goes so far. My voice only goes so far. Yours probably goes a lot further. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, uh, so there was that to begin with. After that, people started using fire to make fire signals, and right? And uh, flashing that light right. on the top of a mountain right. or a hill to send right. a message to another right. community. Right. Um, so there was that. So you're starting to use optics and visuals, right? But again, people can't, I mean, uh, you have a light flashing that light only travels so far before you can't see it anymore. The message, right? the content yeah. of the message must have been very limited at that point. What's interesting is that um, when we get up to the 1830s, we're really, um, we can really talk about an incredible moment in history of telecommunications where Samuel Morse did something really cool, right? Yeah, that's right. So like you were saying, uh, an inventor, Samuel Morse, he really had an issue with the fact that Warning, warning, that was the <laughs> only content that you were transmitting. And so you've likely heard of Morse code before that was invented by Samuel Morse as a means to change the content and become more specific in the content that you're able to transmit back and forth. And before the transmission process was even thought about, Samuel Morse took our alphanumeric language, letters, and numbers and translated that, he created a code of a series of dashes <laughs> and dots or dots and dashes in order to be able to send a simpler signal that provided much more content and was very specific in the message that it was sending. He not only invented that code that we still use nowadays, that beep, dots and beep, dashes. Beep, beep, beep. Right? Very good. Thank yeah. you. He actually allowed us to transition from just relying solely on light flashes and things like that, to actually being able to send sound signals through wires and things. So using right. that Morse code, the right. dots and dashes, now they weren't flashes, they were right. now the sounds that you <laughs> awesomely are making, right? Um, so that's what's really cool. Now, by 1901, an Italian inventor, Marconi, actually came up with a way to transmit messages over longer distances, and he was the one who transmitted the first signal over the Atlantic Ocean from uh, the UK, Cornwall, England, um, all the way to our neck of the woods here That's right. in St. John's, Newfoundland. And I think... Across the ocean, through the air, the first time ever. <laughs> That's, right? That's perfect, yeah. The I heritage think every, moment. Every yeah. Canadian, if not North American, knows that Marconi had a role to play here in Atlantic Canada. Yes. Up until Marconi, we were still the telegraph which Samuel Morse was able to invent, that was still wire dependent. It was, it was still being sent through those wires. But now, what was happening is that the, uh, the notion that these, these messages could be sent wirelessly over the ocean now meant that ships out at sea were safer, um, they could uh, respond to distress calls a lot quicker. In fact, um, everybody knows about the Titanic. Yeah, that's um, right. The Titanic was the first example of how that distress call um, could be sent to other ships and actually save people. We hear about all the people that uh, pass away in the Titanic disaster, right. but the advent of the message SOS, That's right. we all have heard of that before, that was the first time with the Titanic where the SOS was used to actually save people. Yeah. In fact, by using SOS, um, other surrounding ships were able to save over 700 people. Wow. We've really come a long way from those dots and dashes. Definitely. Right? I mean, when you think of all of the wireless digital communication devices out there that we use, I mean, we use our computers, we use our cell phones, we used to use pagers, some people still do. Those <laughs> all must work on a similar framework from way back in the early 1800s. They actually do. We have all of these high-tech 
pieces of equipment, these devices that we use. And the interesting thing is that they all sort of run on that same concept, that similar concept of sending radio signals from one device to the next wirelessly. So now, armed with all of this information of how wireless communication works, our challenge to you is to create a device without using cell phones right. or Wi-Fi right. or any of that that can send and receive messages wirelessly um, and, and really try and see how far you can push those limits. How far can that message That's it? be sent? Create a device, send it as far as it can go. Let's get into what we made here. For sure. So uh, as you can see, we have two setups. We have uh, one for Jacob over there and one for myself. And we have our two micro bits with the battery pack. Micro bits, what's really cool about them is that they become portable for you. So you can take them pretty much anywhere as long as you've got battery power. So what we decided to do, like we were saying earlier, is use the capabilities of the micro bit to not only display messages on our LED screen, but also we've connected... Sorry. Whoop, <laughs> spooked me. There we go. Uh, we <laughs> we've also attached our little speaker to play sounds. And uh, because we're dealing with uh, sending messages back and forth, we decided to go the old school route and use Morse code. And so uh, if we press the, the dot, it's a short message and a long sound. And you can see that also on our LED screen, we've been able to display dots and dashes. So. Oh, and? Oh, and, that's right. And, in case we were wondering if the message was finished or not to sort of end the communication, we have our sort of stop, right? So dot, 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 and then you say stop in order to say, okay, message is done. It showcases the capabilities of the micro bit as well because, you know, you have uh, one button, A, to send a message, the dot, you have the dash, and then you can push them and you can code all of this in makecode.com. Uh, and you can send a stop. So three, right. three functions for two buttons, which is pretty neat. So uh, why don't we sort of demo this? I was thinking maybe we could simulate or actually just use that SOS um, idea. Maybe I'm sort of stuck out at sea. And Are you I'm, in danger or am I, I in, in danger? No, I, well, I don't know. I guess you could call me on my phone. I don't know. They don't work though. All right. right? Okay, let's no. do this. All right. So. Uh, let's say I'm lost out at sea and I need help. Yes. Right? So what's the, 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 the stress so SOS, 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 right? Three dots, three dashes, three dots, and stop. And stop. Okay, okay let's do so it. Okay, so... What if I was walking away? Can mm. you still send me a signal? Like, I'm, I'm over here now. All right. Behind the iPad. I'm going to try this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Still works. Walk, walk a little further back, maybe hey. to the carving cabin. Yeah. Oh, oh I hear still you. Still working. Longer. Okay, going Keep outside going. the door. Oh. Yeah, I hear <laughs> Can you hear me? No. Ah, so you've gone outside and now we can't communicate. There must be a way though. Do you think, no. Mr. Lingley? I'm back. Is there a way for us to perhaps use the micro bits still to maybe relay that message, much like how we see with. Um, uh, cell phone towers and things. Right. We were mentioning earlier in this video, much earlier, uh, that cell phone towers are strategically, strategically placed to ensure uh, the signals are able to wrap around geographic uh, obstacles or obstacles distances and distances or, yeah. and things like that, right? So what we just demonstrated, one clear obstacle was the cinder block wall between us. It's pretty right? big obstacle. I, I mean, it's yeah. a very narrow window in which these radio frequency waves are able to get out the door. That's right. So is there a way that we can use the micro bits and uh, create a, a system of cell phone towers? There could be. And uh, that's maybe up to a challenge to you guys is to use this setup um, and with a additional micro bit make it possible so that the message I'm sending to you can pass through the doorway to you. Yeah. Perhaps there is because it kind of makes sense, right? Because my signal could possibly reach this micro bit as long as I can see it. And then as long as you can see this micro bit as well, even though you're out of my range, right. perhaps there's a way that that gets passed on. A line of sight. Yeah, line of sight, I think, right? right? Yeah. Um, 
Modest sites don't necessarily have to be at the same altitude as well. No, that's If there right. was some way, a helium balloon lifting a micro bits and then the line of sight is, you know, <laughs> along the z-axis, higher, and then you're thinking about satellite wireless communications maybe or something like that. For sure. Or even uh, the stairwell in the school, making it so that two people at right. different floors could communicate perhaps, right? Uh, as you can see, we're excited about where you take this <laughs> challenge. And uh, let's tell you a little bit more about how you can get your hands on some micro bits if you have some ideas. If your school doesn't happen to have a BBC micro bit, make sure that you send a message to the link below and we'll make sure that your school receives a Rogers Innovation Challenge Kit. Now you have all the information that you need to participate in our new Rogers Innovation Challenge. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's, Let's make, make something, something brilliant. brilliant. That was good. <laughs> that was good.